Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. We're doing 28 and 29 together for the simple reason being is that they are both Necron Warriors. Um, let's just crack them open. Get the plastic put to one side. Get rid of that. And there we go. Right, first thing I'm going to do is just check and make sure I've got two different sprues. Which I have. I've got two different sprues, so that's great. I've got so yeah I have a complete set so brilliant if you remember, if people remember last time there was some slight hiccups um, I wasn't affected last time but some people were getting the same sprue part of the sprue twice so yeah just check that and make sure it's good right so Imperium Battle games. Uh, with this in 28, we're looking at more Necron reinforcements. Learn about the Sistari Legions. Rules for using terrain in battle. Necron Warriors. Okay, it's more or less the same sort of thing as we had previously in those issues. I think it was 9 and 10 that we got them. And obviously, battle record. Relentless March. So, more information on Necrons. Talks about Blackstone Fortresses uh, on this bit as well. We then have some info on Skitari Legions. Great artwork, Skitari artwork, really nice. Artisanal apparatuses, apparatuses, there. Uh, we then obviously have the how to build the Necrons, which is fairly straightforward. Now, I've done a build video, um, or I've done build for the Necron models previously. Um, so what I am going to do is I'm going to do a very quick and dirty uh, Necron paint scheme for these, which um, I will uh, do and uh, tack the video on instead of obviously a second build but obviously you can look back through the videos uh, under the Warhammer Imperium um, playlist and you'll see the uh, where the Necron Warriors are and if you want to have a look and see how they are built then um, obviously look at that video we then have core rules 2 here talking about unit coherency terrain features Etc. Buildings, terrain, traits, whether it's defense ball, defense line, breach ball, dense cover, light cover, heavy cover, unstable positions, exposed positions, obscuring, scalable, or inspiring. We then have Imperium terrain. So, this is information about the terrain that you will get within the magazine. We've already got the Armatorum uh, containers. We're also going to get some ruins, and as you've seen in the previous video, uh, we're getting a hematrope reactor, which is there. Uh, plasma conduits as well. We then have a, another scout mission for Counter-Strike. The Necrons continue their relentless advance over the Imperial positions, breaching defensive lines and overrunning uh, fortifications. Imperial forces have been ordered to launch a counter-attack and regain lost ground. The Ultramarines, under the command of a Primaris Lieutenant, have been tasked with wrestling, sorry, with wresting a supply cache from the Necron's grasp in their path and a Necron Overlord and his accompanying warriors. Sorry, in their grasp stand a Necron Overlord and his accompanying warriors, determined to destroy the human vermin. So Necrons, Overlord, Regal Pride. The Necron Overlord is a cunning commander and is well prepared for the Space Marines assault. They, the supply cache has no tactical value to the Necron forces, but is his tempting target for the foe. 
The Necrons seek to break the Imperial Assault, opening a path for their advance on Sifos's well-defended capital. Space Marines, Primaris Lieutenant, Courage and Honour. Leading the assault into the uh, on the cache is a Primaris Lieutenant. With the Ultramarines captain still engaged in combat in Megaria, it falls to the Lieutenant to inspire his troops to victory. They must seize and hold key locations on the battlefield and allow Imperial cargo haulers to extract essential ammunition. Here we have the mission itself, forces in play. We are playing with the full force of Necron Warriors. So we're playing with 20 and the Overlord. And with the Marines, we are playing with five assault intercessors, the three aggressors and the primaris lieutenant. And we're using the pale gray uh, large scale battle map uh, and we're using all three of the Munitorum containers. So there you go. Looking at issue 29 now, we have information on Mars, birthplace of the cult Mechanicus. The sigil of Mars, which is the Cog Mechanicus there. Nice art rendition of the um, Tech Priest Dominus that we got in last issues. Uh, not last issues, but issue 26, I should say. Last delivery for me. We then have information on Gene Steeler Cults. Uh, Space Marines Fire Support. Eradicate the squads, uh, Hell Blaster squads, Eliminator squads, and Aggressor squads. We then have a short story called Into the Swarm with Blood Angels against Tyranids. We then have How to Paint, Necron Warriors, and Canoptic Scarabs. So obviously we're gonna be using a lot more of the paints that we've collected over the last few issues. I think we must be up to about 16, 16 or 18 paints about now. A final gallery, what they look like at the moment. And obviously this is a final gallery showing you all the various squads. So you're gonna have two squads of Gauss Flayers, two squads of Gauss Reapers, both with five in each. And then you've got those three Necrons on their Jack Jones there so more core rules now these look pretty much like they are um, essentially taken straight out of the main core rule book and I will just see So, yeah, there you go. I mean, obviously it's printed on a different page, but side by side, main core rule book and this. It's just the same. So you're getting, obviously, the full, over the collection, it looks like you'll be getting the full core rules um, for playing the game. Um and obviously if you're collecting the binders, then you can store all those in one single binder and you will have the core rules to hand. Uh, more data sheets. Primaris Lieutenant Assault Intercessor Squad. Um, so we've got Librarian, Aggressor Squad in this one and tutorials, uh, information about camo cloaks and auto hitting weapons. We then have Valkyrie down. The Battle of Sifos is not just limited to the ground. Imperial gunships patrol the skies. Doing battle with Necron aircraft in desperate attempt to maintain air superiority and ferry in real reinforcements. In one of Sifos's battle scarred Factorum districts, the transport has been shot down by Necron fire. Operating behind enemy lines, a Primaris uh, Lieutenant, sorry, Primaris Librarian, and a small force of Space Marines have been directed to locate the crashed vessel and extract any survivors they can find. 
Necrons storm and secure relentless advance. Necron forces must overrun the crash site and prevent the Imperium from extracting the transport's cargo and crew. Canoptic constructs accompanied by a unit of Necron immortals swarm the towards the Space Marines' defensive positions, seeking to overrun and destroy them as swiftly as possible. Space Marines, cover the evac. The Space Marines cannot afford to divert many of their forces to assist the evacuation. A Primaris Librarian and a single squad of aggressors are all that can be spared. Outnumbered, they must use the ruins to their advantage and draw the Necrons into a killing field of rubble and shattered buildings. So, we are using the Canoptic Spider, six Scarab Swarms and five Immortals for the Necron Forces. Ultramarines is one Librarian and three Aggressors. It looks like we are using all the barrels, all the ammo crates, uh, the Hematrope Reactor and two of the Armatorum containers in this particular scenario. So, there you go. And finally, we have a trifold pullout page. And this is on a war zone, uh, Amontep 2. Forge World Amontep 2 lies in the outer reaches of the Ultima Segmentum. It was the site of the furious conflict between the forces of Adaptus Mechanicus and the Necrons. So we've got some great photo of the models lined up for battle here. Um, Armager Knights as well get a mention. Uh, we get our Tech Priest Dominus again just there. And some lovely artwork here on the um, pullout. I really like that one. Very nice. So let's have a look at the sprues. Um, so you get three 40mm bases. And obviously you get your 10, 32 mil bases. Now they're all keyed with these little hex, hex holes in them. And that's because all these miniatures have hex um, tabs on their feet which go into these um, and hold them in place. Now these are uh, 2020 sculpts, so they're coming up for two years old. But, you know, again, they're still good sculpts. Um, there isn't much choice. You get a choice of heads because some of the heads are damaged. Let's bring you down, shall we? Because you are slightly closer, look. Um, but yeah, we still got obviously the glass, uh, the Gauss Reapers and the Gauss Flayers here. There's plenty of heads and you do get, obviously depending on how you build these, you get weapon arms and heads leftovers as spares. No such thing. No spares with your scarabs, but the one thing I will say is that you do need to make sure when you're putting the scarabs into the bases, you need to make sure that you get the rock formations and the scarabs all the right way around or else you'll have them hanging off of bases at funny angles. Um, I've chosen to... Uh, not glue my scarab swarms down for the time being, um, she said, but they have stuck in place anyway. Um, it's because I haven't taken them out for a long time, but there you go. So I've not, I've chosen not to glue them so that I can paint them and then do the base and paint the base without um, uh, getting any paint over the scarabs or scarab paint over the base. Um, and then obviously once I'm ready, I will uh, glue them all into position. Um, I do just make the Necron warriors up because there's plenty of space the way that they hold their weapons to be able to get round the painting. But as I said earlier, what I will do is I will do a little uh, paint guide on a quick and dirty paint scheme for these um, Necron Warriors. Okay, join me for that.
let's do a quick and easy, well, easy-ish uh, paint scheme for Necron Warriors. Um, so he's been built and I have um, primed him with paint that I had available to me at the time, which was a uniform grey primer from Army Painter. Um, what I'm now going to do is I'm now going to base coat in Lead Belcher as the primary colour. Because that's the base I prefer to work from rather than with the canoptic alloy. So I prefer to work with uh, an all over brush of lead belcher. Uh, the only one, the only part of this that will not get a coat of lead belcher will be the weapon because that will be base coated black when it's time. And this will get a couple of coats to ensure good coverage and good depth of colour to the miniature. So come back in a mo once we're all painted. Now that I have put two coats of lead belcher onto my Necron Warrior, what I'm going to do next is paint his Gauss Flayer. Uh, in this respect, or obviously the Gauss Reapers, if you had, if you've got those. Um, so this will be painted black, uh, along with all the cabling. But I won't paint the kind of like the heat exchanger here, because that will be um, given a white undercoat and then Tesseract Glow put in there. I will. Do my best to get any cables that are hanging down here uh, below his rib cage where his belly would have been and I'm also if you can just see on the chest you have this little coffin shaped icon just here and that's gonna get a black coat as well so those are all the parts on my Necron that I am going to paint black. The only the only other difference here on my Gauss uh, flare is the blade is just left silver as well on these chaps. Um, so come back once we've done this. Taking our Necron. The next thing I'm going to do is just add in some um, white, uh, or in this case I'm using Ultwin Grey as a base coat and that's just going to be on these cooling fins that are on the Gauss rifle, Gauss flare, so that we can add in some Tesseract Glow a bit later on. Uh, what I'm also going to do is use a detail brush to just add a tiny dot into the eyes. So because again, when you come to add in the tesseract glow, That will act as part of the highlight. The other thing that you're going to need to do, and again with a fine detail brush, is the grooves that are on the gun. Um, put in a white undercoat. For when you come to add the Tesseract Glow in there. So 
filling in the center of the barrel basically and don't forget that um, it has tiny little grooves that go over the top and wrap around um, underneath as well like so. Our next step, once we've popped in our white undercoat for doing the Tesseract Glow, um, before we get to that stage, what we're going to do is put on some Rune Lord Brass um, to break the armour colour up a bit. And I put these on any thing which is covering um, main uh, working parts. So with the tib and fib down the bottom here, we've got these covers on the um, going down from the knee and obviously the cover over the femur here. Um, the ulna and radius here has got a little colour, so all of those, and obviously on the upper arm, and I'm going to do the rib cage here, uh, coming around to the back, but I'm not going to do these shoulder blade coverings. So all of these will get a couple of coats of Rune Lord Brass to bring them up. Um, and this is why I prefer to do this over a lead belcher base, um, just because it helps um, give it a slightly brighter finish, which is going to be helpful when we come in and put a wash on it. Uh, I'm also going to do the top plate on the foot and the top of the hand is also going to get done as well. And essentially those are the areas that I'm going to paint with the Rune Lord Brass um, and the hip, the outside of the hip just here. Um, the rest is going to remain uh, lead belcher. So yeah, we'll put a couple of coats on and come back. Once your Rune Lord brass is dry, what we're going to do is we're going to come in and do all the black uh, all the lead belcher areas with null oil to blacken them down, um, darken them down, make them look dirty and horrid. Um, so that's basically anywhere where exposed working parts are, uh, like on the um, legs, the knee joints, the elbow joints, um, those are the main areas that I'm going for. Um, also the head. Just where the wrist joint is on this arm, there's no coverings on the lower portion of it. So all of the lower section of this arm up to the elbow is gonna get done. The spine. <clears throat> the hip joints. And also the carapace on top of his shoulders just here 
And these are basically all the areas that I am going to put non oil on uh, the elbow joints where they're exposed. just underneath the carapace as well. Uh, not the elbow joint, the shoulder joints I should say. Um, and then in the fingers on the hand. It doesn't matter if there's a little bit of overspill because once the non oil is dry, we're going to come in with some Agrax Earthshade onto the Rune Lord brass areas. Now that my non oil is dry, um, what I've done is I've just ever so briefly retouched the eyes with some white paint um, so that when I put the Tesseract Glow in, it gives a nice glowy effect. Um, I'm going to Agrax Earthshade the brass sections now so literally just going to get covered over obviously if you don't want it too dark then don't put too much on just put a lighter coating on um, I'm quite happy for my Necrons to be um, quite grimy. Uh, I think it adds to the effect of them having been in stasis for potentially millions of years. So. forget the feet as well and that's basically it for this particular one so just go around check and make sure you've got every area from every angle And there you go. Right, leave him to dry. Press right glow next for the eyes and the glow effects on the weapon. Uh, I'm just using this neat, I'm not even watering it down at all. So we've got the cooling fins here. And then we have the glow effect on the weapon itself. Just going to come in and dot the eyes. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to pop in some Athonian camo shade into 
the cooling fins just to give a little bit of depth to the um, Tesseract Glow and I'm just going to also just pop a very tiny amount over the Tesseract Glow on the weapon just to help give it a bit of definition and hopefully have a little tiny little bit of recess so once that's done I'm now just gonna go back to Abaddon Black to tidy up a couple of little things So we have the bar going across the cooling fins that I'm just going to block in with the black. And then on the detail in the center here we've got like little nodes I'm just going to pop a little bit of black on each of those tidy up around the edges a little bit and then just leave that to dry. Final part of painting the miniature is I'm just gonna add in some highlights with Runefang Steel. Uh, these are the only highlights I'm gonna put on the metallic. Um, and to be quite honest, I'm probably gonna be reasonably sparing um, on those. So mostly just taking the edging um, and on some of these do his knuckles etc on there um, I'll also just do a little bit of highlighting on the skull and I'll also use this to highlight parts of the brass as well um, the observant amongst you will probably notice that I have painted the base brown this is in preparation for just dry brushing uh, Zandri dust and then um, Wraithbone to do my uh, texture that I do for my bases. All my bases are the same. And because these are not my main army, I'm not going to do absolute masses to them hence why they're they're only getting uh, some very basic highlights as I say I'm not gonna go mad and you can see like I say these these boys have been in stasis for potentially millions of years and I just want to reflect the dirty griminess of that. Uh, 
Uh, and yeah, that's probably about all I'm going to do, um, highlighting wise. On the base, let me just clean my brush off. Um, I've already painted it with Mornfang Brown. That's always my base colour. I'm then going to come in with Zandri Dust as a first dry brush highlight. And I'm not too fussed if I get any, you know, dust effect on his feet simply because it just, you know, anybody knows if when you walk through a dusty environment, you pick up stuff on your shoes. So that's the first bit. And then I'm just going to use some Wraith Bone. As the final highlight clean my brush. Um, should always remember that if you're dry brushing and you clean a brush you need to let it dry before you then use it again for dry brushing or else you'll end up with a bit of a soggy dry brush more streaks than light deposits but I'm now going to paint the base and this is just Abaddon Black. All my bases are rimmed with Amadon, uh, Abaddon Black. Et voila, one Necron Warrior is done fairly quick and easy. Um, you get 20 of these with the, no, 23 of these with the collection. Um, I've already done 20 from Indomitus, so I wasn't really looking forward to painting more, more of these. Um, and so there you go, that's your Necron Warrior painted up ready to go onto the tabletop. If you want to add in some static grass tufts, you can do so. The other thing that you could do is if you want to highlight up the gun casing, you can do that. And the way for the Necrons, um, now I did the Canoptic Spider, and because you get one of these and he's a spider, I, I spent a little bit more time uh, painting this one and if you notice all the black I've highlighted with green so it's been Caliban green, um, Moot green and then the um, no sorry Warpstone glow uh, and then Moot green so the three colours that I use for highlighting uh, up the black were Caliban green, Warpstone glow and then moot green and you can do that on the rifles if you want to if you want to make the necron warriors stand out a little bit more um but as i say because this was a, just a single construct that i had and it was a um spider uh, i just did the extra little bit on there and then i did the same with highlighting up the carapace and the uh, black on this but with the blade I've used contrast paints and then Elysian green and moot green to try and give a graduation 
to the blade, which if you want to, you could do for the blade underneath the Necron Warrior. Uh, but like I said, I've, I've now got 43 of these. Uh, I've still got 22 to paint fully. And um, as they're not my main army, I don't really intend to spend a lot of time on them. But there you go, quick and easy Necron to fill out your troops' choices. All right, join me in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.